like a whole new car <laughs> crazy all right guys so I just want to make a quick video showing you guys all of the new carbon stuff that we have in the car huge shout out to souvenir for sending everything out we went with the Varus carbon fiber front lip we went with the v2 side skirt extensions we went with the m4 inspired rear trunk lid spoiler and then we went with the rear bumper spats. Thing looks so good. If you're looking for like clean OEM plus style, I think that's pretty much it. I think that would pretty much like nail it right there. Obviously we're not stopping here. We got a lot more stuff we're doing to this car. It's gonna change a lot. I did film some installs of this stuff, but I've already done install videos on all of this. So I kind of skipped past that. I just wanted to show you guys where the car was currently at. And of course, if you guys want any of this stuff, it's going to be all linked down below. But let me show you up close what the stuff looks like, kind of talk about the products. All right. So kicking it off with the Vera slip. This is the same lip that I ran on my 328 when I first built it. And I just I just feel like it's the cleanest lip for these cars. It's not doing too much. It's not doing too little. It doesn't hang like super, super low. It looks very OE plus. It looks like something that could have been offered from the factory, but the fitment is really freaking good, man. It was so easy to install because the fitment was so good. And you can always tell when your edges line up really nice on the end here, everything sort of just like snapped into place and it was super simple to install. The previous lip that I had on was like the M Performance uh, M Sport lip that I had. It had like the painted side parts. It was a huge nightmare to get that thing off because of the 3M that they used. Took me a little bit of time, a lot of heat, and some destroyed thumbs, but I eventually got the 3M off and thankfully nothing was damaged underneath on the uh, factory bumpers. Like I was really worried about the paint um, because of that old 3M. I thought that it would probably pull off the paint, but it didn't and we're good. I hit it with a quick polish on these parts and yeah, I mean, it looks really freaking good. So that is the Varus front lip, like I said. And then these are the V2 side skirt extensions. So these side skirt extensions are super subtle. They're, they're really not doing a lot. I do like them a little bit more because they have this flare out part over here. So it just kind of like sticks out a little bit right there. But again, it's, it's nothing crazy. It's not doing too much. It just adds a little bit of sauce to the side profile of the car. Man, I think it looks really good. These are one of those things that when you see it in person, you're like, wow, this, this all kind of like ties together really well. And then of course we've got the rear spats, which I've ran on all my cars. Now the ones that I had on the 328 were a little bit bigger, came out a little bit more. I like these ones more because they don't. And they're very, very minimal, kind of doing the same thing with the side skirt extensions. It all is very clean and simple all around the car. This one is interesting. I guess they call this like the M4 inspired spoiler. And dude, I love this. It reminds me sort of like the CS style carbon spoiler, but it's got these like hard edges that I really dig. It's it's not rounded off at all. It's got these like really, really like gnarly hard edges, which I, I like. I think it gives it like a really good look to the car. Part of me wants to actually paint match this spoiler. I know some people hate that, but I really do prefer having paint matched uh, trunk lid spoilers. I think it just looks a lot better. I try to keep like the majority of the carbon underneath the car. That's just kind of how I, I like to do things. If you guys remember on my E90 M3, I uh, paint matched my trunk lid spoiler and I thought that looked really good. Kept it super simple on the back. I feel like sometimes the carbon on the trunk lid just kind of breaks stuff up a little too much for me. But nonetheless, um, you guys can do what you want and run it exposed or you know, paint match it, do your thing. But what do you guys think, man? So we did the KW V2s, we got the 437Ms, we've got the carbon going on. I think this is like just a fantastic starting point. For a lot of people, like this would be it. You know, this would really be all they wanted to do to the car. 
keep it very simple. This is still functional. You can daily drive it. It's not too low. You're not going to hit everything. But yeah, overall, super, super happy with where it's at. So we did talk a little bit about all wheel drive and um, the X drive deal with like fitment and lowering the car. So the, the, the research that I've done and you guys have helped a ton in the comment sections. It's not so much about the lowering of the car. It's more about the camber. Like when you run into issues with the front axles popping out, it has a lot to do with the camber that you're running because that will end up forcing the axles further away from the center, which makes sense. I've seen a lot of people who have X-Drive cars that lower them quite a bit and they're not running into issues. I wouldn't say that this car right now is too low. It's definitely not slammed. I have like a finger uh, gap between all the tires, so I'm not tucking or anything, but I am in fact running all wheel drive right now. And I am running 255 35s on the front and 275 35s in the rear the OEM 437M wheels and factory specs, and I'm not having any issues. I don't think that it would be wise to run it like this forever, because you do want to make sure that your rolling diameter is within that like 2% or whatever they say, 1%. And right now I think I'm somewhere at like 2.3%, so the transfer case probably isn't going to be happy if I continue to run it like this. But in terms of driving and like drivability, I have zero issues with it. I'm not running into any rubbing. Um, the car isn't making any weird noises. Like it operates fine. The mile per hour, the speedometer is probably off a little bit. That's one thing that will happen if you change the uh, rolling diameter on all wheel drive car like this. But for the most part, we're good. Uh, I have to replace the tires on these wheels anyways, and I am getting obviously like another set of wheels, but I've decided to change some things up because I want the wheels and tires for the ones that I'm building to allow me to run this car in all wheel drive because I just prefer it. I felt like the rear wheel drive was really awkward and weird. The car just felt unstable and twitchy and you know, the car's meant to be all wheel drive and you take that off and it's probably not gonna react the same. So I decided to just go back to all wheel drive and leave it. I'm not going to mess with it. I also enjoy the all-wheel drive, so it's like, why take that off? I like being able to hook um, whenever I can. There were a couple of times that I got into it with the all-wheel drive, and obviously the car hooks super good, and then I got into it with the rear-wheel drive, and it was like all over the road, and I was like, oh, it's like the Supra again. <laughs> like the Supra had no traction ever. I could see that just happening again with this car when I went back to the rear-wheel drive. So I've definitely fallen in love with having the all-wheel drive, and it's something that I, I would like to retain in the car now. You know, I, when I first started this build, I was like, oh, I'll just convert it to rear-wheel drive, no big deal, and we'll run whatever we want. Well, now I'm kind of realizing that all-wheel drive is kind of nice. I kind of dig it, and we'll just make it work. We'll make it work with the tires and wheels that we have to do. I'm not going to run anything like crazy aggressive. I'm just looking for a simple setup that looks really good. So more on that later, obviously, but um, we have a lot of stuff coming for this car. We've got a ton of performance things. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, most of the performance stuff is taking a bit longer than some of the cosmetic things. I almost have like all of my cosmetic stuff. I'm just waiting on the turbo and a couple of other little things to make that happen. And then the tuning that I'm doing is going to be custom um, with the tuner. You guys have heard of them before, but you'll, you'll see more of that on the channel later. And so that's something that we need to schedule with it being the holidays. Like it's just a busy time for a lot of people right now. So I'm trying to make things happen. Uh, obviously as quick as possible, as if this isn't like quick enough, I just built this thing in like a fucking week. <laughs> but I'm trying to make things, you know, move along quickly and uh, keep that momentum going. Honestly, the big part of this project is I'm, I'm trying to bring this car to BMW Invasion in February, and I want you guys to be able to see it in person, and I want it to be a pretty dramatic difference, and we're gonna drive it down there with a couple of our buddies. So that is really the goal. Um, if you guys are going to BMW Invasion in Orlando in February, I will be there with this car, along with like James, what's your forte, my buddy Jay, uh, a bunch of us are going down there. It's gonna be a great time. So yeah, just a bunch of stuff I wanted to catch up with you guys on. Um, hope you guys enjoyed all the carbon stuff. If you're interested in buying it, I'm gonna have it linked down below. Huge shout out to Souvenir, massive sponsor of this channel. They've helped me out so much in the past and they continue to help me out with this build. We do have a couple of other carbon things that I'm going to install, but I'm making separate videos on those for reasons that will make sense later. But we have like the mirror caps and we have like a steering wheel. I actually have two different steering wheels coming. I have like a cost effective one. I have one that's maybe a little bit more affordable for those people that don't want to fork up like a grand for a new wheel. And then I have a uh, fully custom one coming from Aza Auto Wheel. So I'll show you both versions of those. I'm just waiting on the paddles to come in, kind of strategically like putting all these things together. As you guys know, I have a GTS hood in the garage. We got to get that painted. Um, but I'm waiting for all of the other body parts that I'm doing to this car because I'm gonna paint them all at once with the car. So I want the car to be at the shop when they paint it. I've learned that like kind of just dropping parts off 
at a paint shop and then having them paint them if you like give them your gas lid or something for them to match it's never like quite perfect and i really want the paint on this to be freaking good and alpine white is a tough color to match because it's not really white it's almost like a bit of an eggshell like if you were to do like a championship white or something it's an off white it's not a uh, pure white it's a little bit off and so if you do paint it in pure white you will be able to see the difference almost immediately <laughs> people look at me like i'm freaking crazy when i have a camera man it's okay guys we're just there, there i swear there's other people on the other side of this i'm not just talking to a fucking screen for no reason <laughs> But yeah, so the, the painting is a big thing. Um, the, the people that I use locally are called Cars Metrics. My guy over there, Jeff, I mean, if you're local in Charlotte, like hands down the best place to go. They painted a lot of parts on the E36 M3. I'm actually having that entire car painted at some point in Laguna Seca. But yeah, so we're gonna wait until all of the parts that I ordered for this car, which are a lot, come in so I can have them all painted at once and um, it's gonna be full scent. Hopefully we get it done before February. I'm sure we will. We'll have this thing mostly dialed in by hopefully the new year. I'm trying to get everything done like before January, you know? So yeah, lots of stuff on deck. Um, really glad that you guys are enjoying this build, man. I'm, I am enjoying it so much, kind of like bringing me back to the roots of this channel and like the building block of this channel was the F30, the 328 and having the Daddy 340 is super cool. You know, I'm familiar with the B58. I love it. I think it's probably one of, if not the best platform that BMW is built in terms of affordability, reliability, and ease of making power. So lots of stuff on that in the future, but um, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you check out those links, hit those carbon products. Huge shout out to the boys over at Souvenir, and huge shout out to you guys for watching all the videos and commenting down below and just being a part of the build and being part of the family. Go and get your thick filet merch down below. It's ridiculous, dude. My brother made me this, <laughs> my younger brother made me this hoodie. Just like sent it to me, he's like, yo, I got you something. It's a, it's a thick filet hoodie, bro. I was like, wow, that's gold. <laughs> that is amazing. Anyways, I appreciate you guys. Love you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.